and in today's video I'm making a design that I wish I wasn't. We are going to be making an eye that has a tear that is for Ukraine. It is half blue, half yellow, and has a little silhouette, a little portrait inside the eye, inside the iris. I will go into more detail about what exactly is painted inside the iris as well as the inspiration for this photo, which is done by a street artist, and I'll put a link to their um, Instagram profile as well as other Ukrainian artists that I have followed personally for years in the description box below. I just want to put out my condolences for everybody affected by this war and just say that as um, a person I am doing as much as I can. My mother and I did a, a bake off and we donated all of the money to Ukraine. We ended up with a total of $272 that we donated to the World Central Kitchen, which I was really proud of the amount that we were able to come up with. And I just want to say if anybody can do anything, please do. Even if it's small, even a dollar can help a family buy fruit for the day or buy grain. So if you can do something, please do. Otherwise, I do hope you enjoy this design and don't forget to click subs subscribe to see my future videos as well. So we are going to begin this design with a white, um, just generic eyeball shape. And for the most part throughout this video, I'm going to be pretty, um, uh, pretty just much talking about techniques used and not really going into much about, um, the topic of this video. As far as, um, emotional things, we all, we all know the situation. And so we don't need to, um, we need to just appreciate the art for a moment, I feel like. So we're going to go through and we're going to start sculpting that generic eyeball shape. You can build it up to a slight dome in the middle if you want to. Otherwise, you can leave it fairly flat and build that up later. You can even do that with some um, clear gel products, whatever your strength is. If building up a dome with the white acrylic, which is basically what I did, is easier for you, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, when you go ahead and top coat it, um, you can flip the nail over and it'll dome itself too. So it's, you know, however works. With a light semi-nude pink color, I'm going to be adding the tear duct and then with a cover paint color I'm going to be sculpting in just the skin around the eye the eyelids um, the tear the water line everything everything else fill in the rest of the nail as you're doing this um, you may want to sculpt in eyelids if you really want to go detailed you can add in even some little wrinkles that are going around the eye you can put in crow's feet you can have a lot of fun with this I have sculpted eyes on several different occasions and I can put some of my past eyeball themed videos I have some that are 100% in gel so if you're somebody that really likes to work in gel you, you can do this design with this um this style with the half blue, half yellow for Ukraine with solid gel products too. So if you want to know like the techniques behind doing it with just gel, I know I have a video of an eyeball that's in gel. Old though, so bear with me. It's a really old one, um, but it is there and all of the information is valid. So I will definitely put a link to that in the description box below. But we're going to go through. I've got the upper eyelid, the lower, lower eyelid just sculpted in. I'm actually not too worried about sculpting in too much detail with this layer of cover pink, mostly just getting in the bulk bases on just because all of the rest of that fine detail can be added with the acrylic paint later. And since this is going to be almost completely painted over with acrylic paint, I'm not too worried about the little minutia. Now that it's been sculpted, no filing required, yay! We're going to go through and I'm going to paint the upper half, so like straight line from the eyelid up. I'm going to be doing, or from the, like the corners of the eye up. I'm going to be doing blue, paint over that with a nice soft flat brush that'll give you the least amount of streaks. Paint a thin layer of the paint. If you have to do two coats, that's better than thick coats that will end up looking streaky. Then we're going to be doing the second coat. And this is, like I said, it is definitely inspired by a particular painting from an artist on Instagram called My Dog Size, or that goes by My Dog Size. Incredible artist. I highly recommend you go to his page. If you buy one of his art prints, he is donating money. So there is just some good in the world. There are so many artists, um, you know, entrepreneurs, small business owners world over that are doing so much to help this particular cause. Like I said, if you can do anything, go ahead and do it. You never know. Um, you know, what good you might be, might be bringing to the world. And if anything, it's just good energy. It's just, it's good. To, and if, and it feels like you're not sitting around doing nothing. If you even do something small, it just helps you, I don't know, put a little bit of hope back into things, I guess, even if it's not huge. I feel like if everybody just does a little bit, it adds up to something bigger. So we're going to go through, I'm going to be doing some shading. As you could see on my thumb, I mixed some of the blue color that I started out with, with black to add some shading. Some of the yellow color I started out with, with black to do the shading. So just use those darker shades of the colors to add the shading on the eyelids. Use some gray, some diluted gray to add some shading on the eyeball, bring in some white. And then with some different, I'm going to use some lighter blue 
same color blue I used above mixed with white. I'm going to be adding a little bit of a dry brushing to make it that kind of skin like texture. It doesn't take too much, but just doing a little bit. I'm going to go back through with a little bit more of a really dark blue right along the lower lash or the lower portion of the upper lash line. So right along the edge of the eyeball. And then I'm going to take, once I'm happy with my eyelid in general, I'm going to take the blue color that I've been using to paint the iris. And what is going on in the center of the eye is the city center of Kiev, um, like a silhouette. And then, um, again, horrible things, but a, a silhouette or kind of like an image of, of an attack. So we're going to be painting those two things. Obviously in this nail format, the amount that you can see is minimal compared to what you can see in the absolute beautiful artistry done by my dog size. So again, please go check out his work. I can't stress it enough. Even if you aren't in a position to purchase a print from him, follow his account, share, share the art. If you share it, then somebody else will see it. And you don't know if by you simply sharing his artwork that, you know, you don't know what good it'll do. Maybe through that, even if it's somewhat offhanded, you'll you'll make five print sell and anything that we can do again, anything we can do, you might not know the effects, but they're there. So just in general, do as much as you can. So we're going to be going through after I have a little bit of basic shading done on the iris, I'm going to be doing the silhouette with black paint, which is going to form our, our pupil. And then I'm going to be adding just a little bit on the lower portion of the eye, kind of like underneath, underneath the waterline looking, you know, the reflection part of it. We're going to be adding in some just little highlights Then I'm going to be doing some eyelashes. So whenever I do an eyeball recently, I don't know if my older videos, I did this exact thing, but I like to put a little bit of a reflection of the eyelashes on the eyeball since they're shiny. So you'll see the eyelashes. So I'll just do a little bit of like an eyelash lining, which looks really strange without the upper eyelashes on yet. And then we're going to do the bright yellow reflective marks of the attack. Oh, and then we're going to be doing just a little bit uh, more detailing in there. I'm adding a slightly darker, more richer shade of blue in the iris just to kind of bring it out a little bit more. A couple more details. As soon as you're done detailing the eye as far as it goes with acrylic paint, which is, you know, kind of up to your discretion how much you want to do. You can do a little bit or a lot. But as soon as you're done with it, where you're happy with the outcome, it looks good. It looks as realistic as you want it to apply a layer of matte top coat over the top and let it dry completely. So set this to the side until that matte top coat, which air dries, is fully dry. Then apply some gel sealer over the middle, kind of adjust it over the eyeball so that it actually fully covers. Apply a generous coat of it and then flip your eyeball over on the nail upside down and then cure. And now using some jewelry gel, I'm going to string that along the upper lash line. String the jewelry gel. And then don't worry about adding any to the lower lash line. I know I started to, but then I stopped. I'm going to be grabbing my set of fake eyelashes. These are really cheap fake eyelashes. They are from a Dollar Tree. They're just the cheapest fake eyelashes I could find. I'm going to cut off the little bit on the end so that, because they taper, this particular set isn't like a flared set. So it tapers on the end and I want it to flare a little bit more. So I'm going to cut off the shorter ones on the end, save those to the side. You'll need them. And I'm going to very carefully hold it. One downfall of getting cheap Dollar Tree eyelashes is that the band is pretty thick. So it doesn't bend quite as effortlessly as say a more expensive pair, but honestly go with the cheap ones. Even if it's a little bit more difficult, just because they're so expensive, they're so expensive. So if you can get some for a dollar, it's just well worth it. Um, I'm going to be doing, I've kind of tacked them down on one end and then I'm going to be pressing them in. One other issue I was having with these is that they're so sticky just because they have that sticky band on them that I, every time I tried to use my tweezers, my tweezers just got stuck to the eyelashes. But once you do get them in place and you're going to want to secure them with a little bit more of the jewelry gel, anywhere that you can see where it could just get stuck down a little bit better, make sure you're focusing on getting the two ends of the eyelashes attached very well. A little bit more in the middle and the back, that should be good. Now I'm going to dip individual sections. So I'm going to pull sections of the lashes off of the band. I'm going to dip them into the jewelry gel place them down onto the lower lash line and flash cure them. Go through and do this repeatedly with all of your eyelashes, grab another section, press down, grab another section of eyelashes, hold them on there, press down, 
just keep going through with this process. That one didn't quite stick until you have enough eyelashes on your lower lash line. You don't need to necessarily go all the way across. You can do as many as you want or as few as you want, but just know that it's kind of, this part's sort of up to your discretion. If you wanted the upper eyelashes to look a little bit more natural without that thick band on them, you could have done them in this way too. Just know it's going to take you a lot longer and it's going to be a lot more tedious, but for the lower lash line, it really is necessary to do them in this fashion. And it's not quite so bad because you don't necessarily want them to be as thick or as long. So you can do fewer sections of those little bits of eyelashes. And hopefully, like mine, you'll be able to just pull off sections. Otherwise, I do know a lot of places have like little flurry eyelashes that are individual where you can get little sections of them. You could use those as well. Using a thick builder gel, I'm going to be sculpting my tear. Past the eyelashes, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a thicker section of water for the tear across the bottom of the eyeball as well, adding a little bit of a white reflection line after that's been cured, cure that too, and then I'm going to be applying some gel sealer over anything sticky, so over that gel tear and over any of the exposed jewelry gel that is holding the lashes down. Other than that, this design is complete. I hope, uh, I hope you like the artistry and I hope you can feel somewhat, I don't know, inspired to do something. I will see you all next time. Bye!